Amy Coney Barrett taking the first of two O's to become the next Supreme Court justice. It happened outdoors at the White House last night, a month after Barrett's nomination announcement became a coronavirus super spreader event. We remember that. This was a big political victory for the president just over a week before Election Day. Mr. Trump heads to three states today. Meanwhile, the coronavirus pandemic continues to worsen with daily cases up in 43 states. Weijia Zhang is at the White House, which is dealing with an outbreak among Vice President Pence's staff. Weijia, how did that affect last night's event? Good morning, Anthony. Vice President Pence was not seen at the high-profile event, and his office has not provided any information about why, despite our multiple requests. President Trump wanted the focus of the night to be his Supreme Court pick, but the impact of COVID-19 was impossible to ignore. She will make an outstanding justice. President Trump wasted no time calling a crowd to the White House to witness the swearing in of Judge Amy Coney Barrett, his third Supreme Court appointee. I will do my job without any fear or favor, and that I will do so independently. Is there a sufficient second? Less than two hours earlier, the Republican-controlled Senate confirmed 48-year-old Barrett in one of the most partisan Supreme Court processes ever. No Democrats voted in her favor. The nomination of Amy Coney Barrett of Indiana to be an associate justice of the Supreme Court of the United States is confirmed. The president hopes securing Barrett will help him at the polls since she provides conservatives a 6-3 majority. In a matter of months, the justices will issue a ruling on Obamacare and possibly even the outcome of the presidential election. Last night's ceremony was a chance for Mr. Trump to take a victory lap. I know you will make us all very very proud. One month earlier, President Trump announced Barrett's nomination in the Rose Garden, which turned into a super spreader event. This time, guests were socially distanced on the South Lawn and required to wear a mask, but several hundred still attended. Campaigning in Pennsylvania, former Vice President Joe Biden said he hoped the president had learned a lesson from the first event. I don't blame him for celebrating. There's a lot of things we could be doing having massive crowds, but the fact is that it's just not appropriate now. While President Trump continues to claim incorrectly that the virus is under control, Vice President Pence is taking extra precautions on the campaign trail, like covering his face at all times except while on stage, canceling rope lines with supporters and traveling with a group that is smaller than usual. He is charging ahead, though, with a packed schedule that includes rallies in six states over the next three days. Tony? Weijia, thank you very much.